Well, okay. So back in December, I flew to Tucson as one of 10 rabbis who signed on to work with migrants in the border town of Nogales, Mexico. We worked through a Jesuit group there called the Kino Border Initiative, which housed us and guided us through our work. It was 71 degrees, by the way. We went to humanize the migrants that we met by listening to their many varied stories and promising to share them with, in our own communities, also to accompany them by feeding them and teaching them and showing that we care, and finally, to complicate our own understanding of the situation. We mostly worked at the Comidor, a sort of soup kitchen run by Sister Cecilia, and a women's shelter. The Comidor has a volunteer nurse, a glasses collection, clothes, and some other services. We met asylum seekers, recent deportees, and those thinking about making the difficult and treacherous journey across the desert illegally. This is the Avilad family, who lived for 14 years in South Carolina, where dad was a plumber. They had all five kids there who are American citizens, but he was arrested during an ICE raid, spent a year in jail, unsuccessfully fighting deportation, and then ended up back in Mexico. His family joined him voluntarily, and now they're fleeing violence in their hometown, seeking asylum yet again. Anna here lived in the US illegally for 45 years since age seven. Her three kids are all American citizens living here. She was competing for a job at Walmart as a supervisor, but her comp competitor found out that she was uh, illegal and called ICE on her. She's now separated from her children. Rosa was brought to the US by her parents at age four and was deported 12 years later. Her parents had an acrimonious divorce and dad returned to Mexico, but he was angry at them and called ICE. They were both deported. Every day, three to five white buses pull up at the border and release shackled people. Uh, they undo the shackles. Fernando and Paulino here were released about an hour before this photo and made their way to the Comidor. They had spent time in a US prison before their asylum claims were denied. We listened to many stories about gang violence in some parts of Mexico. These two men told us about a common story of extortion of them and their families. And when they were unable to pay the extortion, the father of the younger man and the uh, son of the older man were each murdered. Teaching migrants about their rights was part of our work. In this mock courtroom scene, Olivia played the role of a migrant who was injured. Charles played the, uh, a US border officer who denied her medical attention, and I played the role of the judge. In my mock ruling, I explained about medical attention as a human right and how to assert it if you need it. Volunteers Ed and Priscilla on the left here from the organization No More Deaths help migrants with phone calls. You see migrants must erase their contacts from their cell phones lest they might be kidnapped and their contacts extorted. Rick helps them cash their $50 checks which the US Prison Service gives them upon release but which are not negotiable in Mexico. Here are rabbis sorting frijoles and a volunteer Iowan college professor making tortillas, which, by the way, are very good. There are uh, volunteers who come, they come through the No More Deaths organization, which focuses mainly on helping those uh, who uh, are at risk of dying trying to cross the desert illegally. I was quite touched when Sister Cecilia explained, quote, these rabbis are here to be with you so that you know people out there care and you're not alone on your journey. Prayer is common in the, in the Komidod, and we, as rabbis, got to lead many prayers. Rabbi Ethan is, was there juggling for the kids. Along with other kids at the women's shelter, Maggie here enjoyed the gifts we brought. She loves to draw. Most all of the women at the women's shelter and the children uh, were fleeing horrific violence and shared their stories. Lucera had been deported a few days earlier and was staying at the women's shelter. About six months earlier, fleeing violence, her family sought asylum at the border. To do this, you come to the border and you take a number and wait, sometimes for weeks. While waiting, Lucera turned 18. At that, Lucera was then treated as an adult and as an independent, she was incarcerated from the rest of her family pending a ruling on her asylum claim. 
After six months in prison, like 90% of other Mexicans seeking asylum, her claim was denied and she was deported. But her family are scattered around in other locations, each fighting an asylum claim separately. We walk desert trails used by migrants to understand how difficult the journey through the desert is. About one in five make it, it's estimated. A map in the Comidor here urges them not to go with red dots for where migrants' bodies have recently been found within uh, one, two, and three days from the, from the border. A water jug painted black to avoid reflection, a Bible, moccasins which leave no footprints, and a baby bottle are among the sacred relics we found in the desert. Notice the eyelash curler. If you're one of the lucky ones who survives the journey, you better not look and smell like you've been in the desert for five days. Water is sometimes left by Good Samaritans for migrants. Four Good Samaritans were convicted just a couple of weeks ago for setting out water and are now awaiting sentencing in federal court. Border Patrol sometimes dumps the water, but sometimes water is a, a, a hazard. Uh, many migrants die in flash floods on those arroyos. There's a border wall that runs through most, most of the area. People who uh, are fleeing for their lives find ways around it fairly easily. When you're jumping from a burning building, a wall is the least of your worries. Those who have been charged, caught crossing illegally are charged with the misdemeanor of illegal entry. They meet their lawyer in the morning, and in the afternoon, there's mass court hearings, 75 migrants in about an hour or two, where almost all plead guilty in exchange for little or no prison time, and then they're deported. The mass justice known as Operation Streamline has been the focus of many protests. In all, it was quite an honor and, uh, to, to be a witness, to serve, and to complicate my own understanding, and finally to share it with you. Thank you.